And so here's the demo. Hey, it's Tommy who's calling. Hey, do you remember my name? Hello, uh, today I'll be taking you through how to clone yourself um, as an AI caller and clone yourself on the phone using a combination of Vapi, Make.com here, as well as Eleven Lab. And so what each platform actually does is Vapi, which I've made numerous tutorials on, um, on my channel, if you want to go check those out, actually builds the AI caller and the knowledge it has and what it's supposed to do and all that prompting, as well as provides the model, transcription, voice, stuff like that. What we connect it with is Make, where I've created a sort of faux memory for these callers so that if someone calls and it recognizes the phone number, it will actually grab some information about them, like their name and maybe where you know them from, stuff like that as well as 11 labs here, which allows you to actually clone your voice. And you'll see that I have cloned my voice and you're able to use it here in Vappy so that when you do call it, um, it actually sounds like yourself. So I'm actually gonna start here in Vappy, walk through everything I've done in here, um, and then I'll go on to the other platform. I just wanna mention, to get the most out of this tutorial, follow along with me, do this for yourself. That's how you learn. Um, all the resources are down below. There's really no excuse to not follow along. Everything's here for you. You can get free versions of all of this. I believe 11 labs to clone your voice is like five bucks a month. So even if you want to skip that part, then everything's totally free. No excuses. Once again, all the resources are down below. If you want to work with me, you can go down below and click the link to book a call. So let's actually continue with this. So I just have my first message, um, which is just, hey, it's Tommy who's calling, uh, real casual. And then my prompt is meant to just replicate me. This is meant to handle calls in my everyday life. You know, if I'm really not having it that day and I don't want to talk to family or friends, you know, maybe work colleagues, stuff like that, um, just want to hide in my room, then I can put this number out there and people can talk to the fake Tommy. And so the, at the top of this, I run a tool to kind of, this is what I was talking about, where it will have that faux memory. And this is how I found the best way to do it without making a transient assistant. And so that's a bit in the weeds here for Vappy, but this is sort of the best way to input knowledge during the call of like a previous database, just like right at the beginning of a call. And so that's what I said is just to run that function at the start of every call. And then I just describe myself a bit, 19 year old American male, laid back, easygoing personality. These, things are, these are things I strive for and not what I actually am. But then I just say my primary role is to handle whatever calls come my way, um, just engage in lighthearted, friendly conversations and just kind of being conversational. I'm not trying to push any business agenda through this, just talking and having a conversation with the other person. I have, as you can see here, said the overarching mission is to create a positive and memorable calling experience with the person on the other end. And then I also did create a knowledge base. Now in my other videos, I kind of go over the knowledge base. This one I won't go over because it has like personal information and stuff like that. But I did just like, if you do want to clone yourself, input just some general information that the caller should know about you. So I talked about my business, my, my pets, um, where I'm from, stuff like that. And then um, nothing else too complicated outside of here. I pretty much just chose when you make a new assistant, um, it'll come with generic preset settings. I, I really didn't change anything. And then we'll get to this voice configuration in a second once we get to 11 lab. The only function I have is once again, we'll talk about that once I get to make. And then I didn't change any of the advanced or analysis tabs. I, I don't need any reporting for this. I guess if I, if I really were to do this, then um, it might be nice to have a Google Sheet kind of tracking all the calls. But I didn't particularly do this for um, this demo. And I would like to note before we get into 11labs and make.com that both cloning your voice and this kind of like retrieving um, info about the caller prior, not prior to the call, but during the call, is that while I'm using it in a kind of playful way here, these are both very practical business applications where you could imagine if you have a customer service caller, you would like them to recognize if someone's an existing customer without always having to ask. Someone calls later that day, you might want to remember, fish through your CRM, find their number, and then you might have some client notes about them. And then all of a sudden that call is a lot more personalized um, and the AI becomes a lot more powerful and is armed with more knowledge to really provide a better customer experience, which is what you're trying to do 
when you implement this for businesses. And then also clone your own voice. If you wanted to do follow-up calls, say you're running Google ads um, and you have a video sales letter, you, it's, you just have a landing page with a video sales letter and someone's already seen you speak. Or um, if you book a call through my booking link, if I had set up a follow-up caller with my own voice, like that's kind of cool. Like this person is the reason you booked the call. Um, they're who persuaded you to book the call and five, 10 minutes later, you get a follow-up call from them asking for more info and it sounds like them, it's their voice. So um, you can see the practical applications outside of just having fun with it like I did in this demo. So I encourage you to look beyond sort of the playful use case I did in this video and sort of look beyond that and start to see the possibilities, the range of possibilities that you can do with this new technology because it really is limitless. And I'm sure just those examples I, I gave are just the tip of the iceberg. And so let's continue and um, I'll start off with 11 labs. And so here in 11 labs, now once again, you do need, I believe it's called the basic subscription um, to be able to clone your voice. But um, I did clone my voice here and you can use it. And all you need to do is copy this ID and paste it over here in Vappy to clone it. You just add the voice ID manually. Or if you connect your 11 lab API key and account to Vappy here under provider credentials, you're able to connect your 11 labs account. Then through that, you are able to actually find your voice in this drop down menu like I have here. But you are able to also just click this button and add that voice ID manually. And so back into 11 labs, now that you know, once you actually build the voice, um, I won't clone my voice again, but if you were to add a new voice, this is how you do it. So you would click add a new voice. Um, I do the instant voice cloning. And then you put in the name of the voice, um, you drag and drop some audio files. And depending on the audio file, these would probably be around a minute to two or three minutes long. Um, depending on if it's MP3 or dot wave, um, because you can only have up to 10 megabytes each, um, but you can provide up to 25 of those. Generally they say over, like they say here, more than five minutes of yourself talking, the improvements are really incremental. It doesn't matter a whole lot. One thing to note here is that if you are cloning your voice specifically to use in Vappy or where it'll be used over the phone, using a recorded phone call with already sort of that phone static that you know if you're calling someone their voice isn't 100% clear like it might be a mic or something like this that can actually make it sound better over the phone because it kind of masks some of the nuances that AI misses in someone's voice and then you can add labels stuff like that description so that's more so if you have a bunch of different voices or um if you aren't cloning people, but rather like specific types of voices so that you can label them and remember what they are. And so for me, my label or my description was just a teenage male. And so now I will use this voice and I will say, how are you doing today? How are you doing today? How are you doing today? It's kind of weird to listen back to. But um, now we have to actually go on to the make tutorial. But now let's get on to make. And now that we're on to make, um, I'll show you how this tool calling works under this functions tab. And I'll actually go to tools and get color info. And this is a pretty simple tool. So within Vappy, what you will do is you will paste the webhook that we create and I'll show you where we make that in a second um, when creating this scenario. And then the tool name is just how you want to identify it. That doesn't actually impact how the tool performs or anything like that. And then the description kind of influences when you would run the tool. However, as you saw within my assistant, I informed the AI voice caller when to actually run it. So I just say at the very start of every call, just run this function. 
And if you wanted to say after the third question run this function, it'll run it then. Otherwise, if you do not explicitly tell the AI, it will just go off the tool description on when to run it. So say the caller asked for pre-existing information about themselves, then it would run the function if I had not explicitly explained when to run it in the assistant. But I like to put it in the prompt um, as you see here. But end of that rant, um, I only have two properties for this, which is just caller info and the caller name, because as you'll see in this Google Sheet, I only put name and additional info. Obviously you could have a multitude of fields here um, that you could fill in and have as much information as you want. But let me actually show you within Make how it uses this Google Sheet to um, retrieve and then send back the data. So if we go into this scenario, it ends up being pretty simple. It's just a webhook, which you then copy and paste for the integration. This is where you put it when you create the new tool. So if you were to go to new tool, make, you would copy that webhook right in here for the server URL, then just hit next. And then for the Google Sheet, I connected this Google Sheet, as you've seen me do in my previous videos. If you don't know how, just connect your Google account and then search up your spreadsheet and then make sure it's a correct sheet. So down here, sheet one, we only have one sheet, so that's correct. And then I filtered it by the caller number, which is right here, um, which is column A. And I wanna make sure that with the information from the webhook, I wanna make sure that that caller number contains the customer number of who is calling, which is what this maps to. And again, if you're just copying this from the guide down below with all the resources, this will already be mapped for you. You don't have to worry about finding this, but if you do just go to customer, um, you should find their number. And so what this does is filters for if the number that is calling is within this clone memory database, then it will grab back these rows and how it responds to VAPI is through this webhook response where um, you had to format it in some JSON and this tool call ID um, once again comes from that first webhook and you just paste that there and you don't have to worry about changing that and then the result I put and I labeled it name and then name which is column B and then additional info which is column C and so now this is the information that VAPI actually gets after running this function that the AI will actually see. And so it'll then see that Craig called and he works for pest control. So let me call this using my phone and we can actually see how this works live. Call a Rose AI demo. Hey, it's Tommy who's calling. Hey, do you remember my name? will just take a sec. Hey Craig, how's it going? It's going well. Do you remember where I work? Cool, I get that. Yeah, you work in pest control, right? How's that going for you? It's going great, man. What are you up to? Nice, I'm just hanging out, enjoying some good vibes, you know, just keeping things chill. What about you? Any cool projects or plans coming up? Yeah, I've been looking into AI a bit. Do you know anything about AI? For sure. AI is such an exciting field. It's all about creating systems that can learn and make decisions, kind of like how we do. There are tons of applications, from voice callers like me to self-driving cars and even healthcare. What specifically are you interested in? I'm also interested in AI voice callers like you. I have to go now, Tommy. Have a great day. That's awesome. Voice callers are super cool, right? They can make life a bit easier and more fun. Anyway, it was great chatting with you, Craig. Have an awesome day and don't hesitate to reach out if you want to talk more about AI or anything else. Catch you later. All right, see ya. And so that was a quick demo. And as you could see during the call, it was able to remember um, the name, or I guess not remember, it was able to grab the info of the name and as well as this additional info and then use it in the call. So I'm actually gonna change this 
to Ryan and and is a plumber and um, now I will call it again just save this and we'll see if it has updated with that new information hey it's Tommy who's calling hey do you remember my name one moment hey Ryan of course I remember you how's it going man it's good do you remember what I do for work Yeah, you're a plumber, right? That's pretty cool. How's it going with that? It's going well, man. Have a great day. Cool, I get that. You too, man. Have an awesome day. And so there you see, um, even after we updated this Google Sheet, it was able to remember these. And once again, I don't have multiple numbers to call from, so I can't sort of show this. But if you did say have 50 numbers, or if these were order IDs, or if they were customer IDs, whatever sort of identification you can have, then it would say this number was down here in row 22. Um, it would only grab this information about that specific customer. It wouldn't grab everything um, about every single customer. And so, yeah, that was just a quick demo of um, an AI clone I made of myself, but it has some features like the AI um, voice cloning, as well as being able to grab that caller info that can apply to a bunch of different business and commercial applications for these AI voice callers beyond just making something fun to mess around with. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, once again, if you'd like to work with me, um, build out a system, probably not like this, but one applicable to your business or for your company, um, just book a call down below. I'm always free to talk um, as well as you'll find all my socials down there and make sure if you are at the end of this video and you didn't build this side by side with me, go down there. You just have to copy and paste a bunch of stuff and it'll get you started with your AI voice calling journey. And trust me, you'll learn a lot more than you think just by following along. So thank you and have a great day.